Okay, three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good afternoon. Whatever it is for you, I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is Strong Opinion Sports, episode 340. And I hope it's actually 340 because I didn't look. I'm Last episode was 339. I'm like 99.9% sure. I just, hey, I got ballsy today. Didn't write down, no, I didn't check. I'm like, I know it's 340. I know my stuff. It's my job. It's my show. I, I'm pretty sure I know. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about Drew Brees. We're going to talk about the New York Jets. They have hope. For the first time in a long time, I look at the Jets and I go, huh, feel pretty good. Uh, there's as many as 11 quarterbacks right now currently available that could become starting quarterbacks. So I think we're not quite prepared for how much madness is about to happen with NFL quarterbacks in like the next month and a half. I'm going to, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we'll finish the show off with predictions versus reality for the AFC West. That's the, the Chargers, Kansas City, uh, the Broncos, the Las Vegas Raiders. Going to be a lot of fun. I want to start today, though, by just sharing some grievances, I guess. Grievances? That's the word, yeah. Complaining. Uh, not about sports. I apologize. I'm so cold. I, I don't know if this is relatable. Um, I, and I don't trust my thermostat at all. It says 73 degrees. I woke up this morning freezing cold. Like I'm like, there's no way. It, it, you're lying. It's not 73 degrees in here. I'm freezing cold. Um, I, I guess maybe I went on vacation. I went to one, I went on one tropical vacation and now I'm a snob. I can't, I just can't do the cold weather at all. It's 34 degrees outside. I live in Washington. I'm like, nope, no, I can't, can't do it. Not, not a little bit. Uh, and I've never been to Florida, but Florida's cheaper than where I live, like by a lot. And it sounds really good right now. Washington. And like, I don't even live anywhere cold. Like I can't imagine right now if I lived in Chicago where it's like actually cold and it's actually like snowy and miserable, like, oh man, I've become a wimp. And I hear that like when you you fly first class, you can never go back. Maybe I'm like, I saw sun one time, I woke up, it was warm outside. I'm like, I, man, can never go back. Now, grievance number two, and this might actually contribute to me being cold a lot. I'm on a diet. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to lose weight, first of all. I'm also, I've got a bunch of gut problems and it's messing up my throat and acid reflux. And I've got problem after problem after problem with my health. And so... I'm on this very strict, annoying diet where I'm only, uh, I guess, what did I say? I'm not eating any solid foods. It's basically chicken broth every day, like all day. And I'm actually, we, oddly enough, I'm not hungry. You would think I'd, I'd be like, I'm, I want McDonald's and Chick-fil-A. And I mean, there's like little pangs like that, but I'm really not missing food. But I wonder if that's why I'm cold. Like my body's like, your, your calories are so much lower like chicken broth has like 140 calories in it, the one I have. Like nothing, right? I, I, maybe I'm just cold because of that. I have no idea. But I wanted to share my two problems. I'm cold uh, and I, I'm not hungry, but I, I probably should be more hungry than I feel like I am. I'm trying to lose weight. If anybody relates to that, let me know. Uh, I want to start today. Go from hopefully fun and lighthearted and uh, I, th I think I've never done a, an intro like that where usually I try to get into sports. Today I'm like, no, it's my show. I'm cold. I want to complain about it. Uh, let's talk about Drew Brees. After 20 years in the NFL, Drew Brees has officially retired. And uh, it took so long, I was actually wondering whether or not, maybe even if it was ever going to happen. You know, the Super Bowl came and went, and I figured he'd do it after the Super Bowl. And there was no announcement. I'm like, oh, is, is Drew Brees coming back? Like, what's happening here? Uh, well, he made the announcement 15 years to the day that he first signed in New Orleans. March 14. Uh, 2006. So 15 years later, to the T, to the day, he retired. That's kind of cool and poetic. It's a clean 15 years with the Saints. Uh, now, Drew Brees is a special quarterback for a lot of reasons. I don't need to tell you. I, I will because it's my job. But you, if you know who Drew Brees is, you know he's incredible. He's a future Hall of Fame quarterback. Um, you know, he's really one of three quarterbacks that very heavily inspired me during my playing days as a quarterback. For me, the three kind of hallmark quarterbacks, it was always Drew Brees, Tom Brady, and Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning had a poster. I learned how to throw a football, like to flick the, finger, flick the booger off the finger. Uh, Tom Brady, it's pretty self-explanatory. He's incredibly successful. Uh, his leadership, his ability to go from a nobody in the NFL draft to the greatest quarterback we've ever seen, very inspiring. And then Drew Brees, 
Um, not only is he a clearly amazing quarterback, uh, leadership, the way he throws the ball, accuracy, preparedness, yada, yada. Uh, but Drew Brees was unique because he was short. And I am 5'11 on a good day. <laughs> I'm probably 5'10 and three quarters, uh, you know. And uh, if you're a short quarterback who wants to play in college, that can be a problem. I was talking to a high school coach literally last night. And he's all excited. He's like, I got a 6'5 quarterback. And that's enough. The fact that he's 6'5 is going to bring attention from colleges. They'll go, oh, he got a tall kid. He's big. Well, let's recruit him. Let's go check him out. When you're short, the road is harder. There's fewer people interested in you. And there's going to be a lot of people that are always going to say, he's small. Or, or they're going to doubt you. Or this or that. And Drew Brees fought that battle. He's six foot tall on a good day. And he had to fight against the stigma of being short his entire career, especially early on in San Diego, in college, in recruiting everywhere. And things are a bit different now. Uh, Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray kind of really helped fight that stigma. And Doug Flutie was short, like way short, won a Heisman Trophy. But in the NFL, he really dealt with a lot of, uh, I guess, frankly, prejudice. They had a Rob Johnson, another, I think that's the name of the guy, this tall guy in Buffalo they loved, and they eventually, they got rid of Doug Flutie. They didn't really embrace him the way he probably should have been, given how good he was. Go watch the film. Doug Flutie was amazing, was short, never got embraced. And so Drew Brees was really the very first of the short quarterbacks who overcame the stigma and was welcomed in. Eventually people went, oh, he's really good. Wow. You can be six feet tall, which is like, you know, Kyler's 5'11", maybe. And we're like, oh, you can be a shorter quarterback and still play the game. And, of course, Drew Brees succeeded because of his leadership and his work ethic. You cannot control how tall you are. That's just kind of luck of the draw. But you can control your accuracy. You can control the way you treat people. And Drew Brees prepared like a madman during his career watching film, working with his receivers, always tweaking and evaluating himself. What little changes do I need to make to my game to make myself better? That's what Drew Brees was always asking himself. So Drew Brees, for me, was a role model. I have always greatly admired him and looked up to him, uh, figuratively, because we're about the same height. <laughs> um, and I'm sad to see him go. I I'm really disappointed. I I I don't know. I think a lot of people, I am sure people that do my job, sportscaster, were kind of taking notes and preparing for the day that Drew Brees did retire. For whatever reason, my dumb self didn't do that. I didn't I didn't think for weeks, like, what am I going to say when Drew Brees retires? Because in my head, I was kind of hoping he's going to come back, right? There's there's no announcement. What Maybe, maybe this guy I love is going to come back and play the game one more time. It would have been fun. We didn't get that. Uh, it's very understandable. Uh, and he, he leaves an incredible legacy. Drew Brees was in the NFL for 20 years. He had a huge impact on my life. He also had a huge impact on the city of New Orleans. They won a little bit uh, as a franchise in the late 80s, early 90s. Go look at some of their seasons. There, there are some wins in there, like some good seasons. But for the most part, mostly before Drew Brees, the Saints did not win much of anything. And then Hurricane Katrina came. Uh, it flooded and decimated the city, and Katrina hit uh, New Orleans on August 29, 2005. August 29, 2005, the hurricane comes, decimates the city, and a little bit after that, March 14, 2006, briefly afterwards, right after the year it ended, Drew Brees signed in New Orleans. Drew Brees came to New Orleans at a really low point. He chose that city at their worst. A loser franchise in a recovering city with a brand new coach. And Drew Brees helped New Orleans come back. In 2009, Drew Brees led New Orleans to a Super Bowl. He won <laughs> that city a Super Bowl. It's incredible. It's cool. It's, uh, man, I would actually encourage you to read Drew Brees' book. Uh, I read it in high school. It's called Coming Back Stronger. Kind of details his journey from high school to meeting his wife and how they talked all night at Purdue and how he went to the Chargers and then he went to New Orleans and why he chose there and how 
when the Saints were recruiting Drew Brees, you know, hoping he would come there. They took a wrong turn and ended up in a really bad part of the city that was, like, destroyed. And they were trying to hide him from that. And instead, they felt exposed. Like, oh, crap, he saw what we really are. And Drew Brees saw New Orleans at its worst and said, I'm still going to go there. The people are nice. I want to be a part of this. And uh, I, 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 you could argue, like, he didn't have a lot of options, so that's, that's fine. But what Drew Brees did in New Orleans to me... Uh, it is so cool and, and touching and inspiring. And again, read the book, Coming Back Stronger. Read it in high school. It, it's a great book. It's a is his biography. Could not recommend it enough. Uh, now, quarterbacks like Drew Brees, they just don't come around very often. He's retiring number one in career passing yards, number one in career completions, number two in career touchdown passes. That's uh, Tom Brady is 581. Drew Brees has 571. It's an amazing legacy. Like, statistically, in some categories, he dominated. So, like, oh, I I thought it'd be closer. You're like, wow, okay. So, Drew Brees overcame the stigma of being a short quarterback. He helped New Orleans on and off the field. He won a Super Bowl. He set tons and tons, heaps of records. And was a great leader and a great role model. The way he treated people, the way he prepared every day, every game, uh, his, his mechanics, everything Drew Brees did. Uh, was a, a model citizen, and I, I just I, I look at Drew Brees and go, man, like I really the way he carried himself, the things he did for that city, and the way he led as a football uh, as a quarterback, I guess. Um, I, I'm really thankful for Drew Brees. I, I am really really glad I got to be alive to watch him play. Uh, there are greats who uh, I was not alive for. I, I didn't get to watch Dan Marino play. I was I wasn't alive yet. I wasn't born yet. And uh, there are people who are going to be born in a couple years that will never get to see Drew Brees play football. I I consider myself very lucky that I was alive to watch it happen. And uh, I just am so thankful for Drew Brees. Thank you so much, Drew. Uh, And uh, it was a pleasure, a pleasure to watch the guy's career. All right, um, let's shift gears. I need some water real quick. Uh, Kind of a crazy story coming up. I'm going to use the word crazy a lot probably in this topic. That's because it's kind of crazy that there are so many quarterbacks that are available right now. There, you better realize there is a ton of quarterback movement coming up in the next month and a half. And I am beyond excited for the NFL draft. The NFL draft is like my, the Super Bowl is great. I love the NFL playoffs. It's fun for me. My absolute favorite part of the year is the NFL draft. I Oh, like there's a ton of hope. People are excited. There's new quarterbacks to evaluate and talk about and make predictions and uh, people lose out. People get excited. Uh, The NFL draft is this amazing, amazing event. It's so much fun. And we're going to see at minimum five quarterbacks drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. That's awesome. We're going to see Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, and Mac Jones. Uh, We may see somebody else. We might see like a Kyle Trask at the end of the first round. I mean, Kyle Trask is interesting. I, I haven't done film study on any of these quarterbacks yet. Uh, not not to my standard. I, I watched them play a lot and I got a lot of notes, but I really want to dive in and rewatch every game and make a video and tell you what their film says and what I feel about their how they are. And uh, like guys like Trey Lance actually is interesting because he hasn't played much in the last year and a half. So some of his film, I think he's better than what you'll see because the film is so old. He's had so much time to prepare. It'll be fun. I really cannot wait to dive into the film. Uh, that'll be in April. Now, that's pretty wild. That's five quarterbacks minimum in the NFL draft alone. But then there's also, you got to ask yourself, like, well, actually, I guess another thing. Is there going to be a surprise quarterback? Is there going to be a quarterback like a Tom Brady or Russell Wilson or Dak Prescott who falls in the draft? And ends up being a big surprise where we go, wow, I didn't expect that guy to do what he did. Like, did anybody expect Russell Wilson? I I, I probably, I did. I believed in Russell Wilson. I thought a lot of the problems with him is height. Uh, But I didn't see Dak Prescott becoming what he became. Nobody saw Tom Brady. And so is there going to be a guy who is a surprise in the draft? That could be a sixth quarterback minimum in in the draft that becomes a starting quarterback. Uh, Then along with the draft, there's still a bunch of quarterbacks who could be moved, could be traded, could be, we don't know. Um, I am holding out hope. I, I really want a Deshaun Watson trade to happen. 
I uh, I gotta say, I think Houston is playing with fire. Houston is very uh, nonchalantly acting like there's no problem. They're just they're, Houston's gonna be like, oh, it's fine. We'll have a quarterback who hates us, who doesn't want to play for us. We're, we're gonna make, the, we're gonna force him to play for us. I don't think that's a good policy for any quarterback. Um, Deshaun Watson doesn't want to be there. He might play for you. Uh, but look, even if Deshaun does play, if your quarterback hates you, doesn't want to be there, I don't think that's a good recipe for success at all. That's not good. The job of quarterback is too hard to have a guy who doesn't want to engage with you. Like Deshaun will probably be a professional. I, I, my guess is he'll, he'll like week 10. I, th- I think it's like week 10. There's a deadline where he's got to come back. So he accrues a whole year. That way he doesn't waste a year where the Texans still have his rights uh, in time. So he's got to play a little bit, but he might wait till the very last minute and say, all right, I'm here and I'll, I'll catch a snap and I'll take a knee, but I'm not, I'm not playing quarterback for you guys. Trade me. I think Deshaun is a stick in the mud and he's not going to move. He's like, you can try. You can try, you can try to make me play for you. I'm not going to play for you. So I, I want to stress something. Houston needs to understand the urgency of their situation. Their quarterback doesn't want them. They got to move the guy away. And Houston had better make a move before the NFL draft happens. Before teams pick their quarterbacks of the future, you wait. The Jets are the number two overall pick. The Jets are the ideal trade for Houston. Okay, we'll take your number two overall pick. We'll take your, uh, I think they have like the 21st overall pick. They got a pick later in the first round. So they got two first round picks. They got, uh, we'll say, hey, give us another pick in the future. You can take a King's Ransom. For Deshaun Watson from the New York Jets. And the number two pick allows you to draft whatever quarterback you want that's not named Trevor Lawrence. You get another starter in the first round this year. Probably another first round pick in the future. If Houston doesn't want, like, a ton of stuff, wouldn't you rather have a good quarterback you like who's cheap, who actually wants to be there, instead of Deshaun Watson who's expensive? I like Deshaun, but he hates you and doesn't want to be there. Like, I don't don't understand why Houston isn't jumping at the idea of trading Deshaun Watson to the New York Jets, getting all their assets and rebuilding the right way and having a cheap rookie contract. I think that'd be great. But Houston is very stubborn. They're like, no, you will play for us. You signed a contract. And I, relationally, that doesn't work. But again, if you wait till after the draft, Houston is going to go, oh, well, every team has the quarterback they like. They they were very intentional. They chose a quarterback in the draft they, they really fondly love. Um... And the only team left that doesn't have a quarterback is the, like, Chicago Bears. And the Chicago Bears, well, uh, they have no assets. <laughs> like, the, the Bears, the, the advantage with trading now is if you trade away Deshaun Watson now, you will end up in a situation where you can replace him and get another quarterback. If you wait till after the draft, it's going to be a lot harder to make a trade where you get a quarterback in return or a asset that can become a quarterback in return for next year. You can wait and trade with Chicago. They'll give you a first round pick for two years from now or whatever, you know, next year. But then you go all of 2021 without a starting quarterback playing like what's, who's there? I don't even know. I have no idea who their backup quarterback is. I, I it doesn't matter. <laughs> like Chase Daniel or something. I, I, I don't know. Houston has got to make a move soon. I, I'm going on a long rant here, but they cannot wait too long to make a move. Now, another question is Miami. Or the Miami Dolphins committed to Tua Tungavaloa. Tua was very, uh, very, he was underwhelming his rookie year. Now that's in comparison to Justin Herbert, who was amazing, and Joe Burrow, who was amazing. Now, I don't know that that scale, I, I don't know, make what you want of that scale, but in comparison to Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, Tua was very underwhelming. You're like, ah, Justin, amazing. Joe, great. Tua, kind of boring. Not that great. Not that impressive. And a lot of people doubt Tua. So I I would ask, is Tua available? Now, again, I want to make a statement. People doubt Tua a ton. He's out there working right now to prove all those people wrong. I would love it if Tua came back strong, had a great year, said, this is why I was drafted where I was drafted. I deserve more respect. I love that. But still, I I wonder, will a trade for Tua happen? It doesn't matter how Tua feels and the work Tua's doing. If Miami doesn't like him and doesn't trust him, It's not going to work. And Miami has the number three overall pick. There will never, ever be a better time to draft another quarterback to replace Tua than right now. If you're going to make that move and replace Tua, do it now 
Well, you can get Zach Wilson or Justin Fields. Make that move as soon as possible. Personally, I love Tua. I'm rooting for him. Uh, will he succeed? I don't know. It could go either way. Uh, we'll do a film analysis, but his film is very like, I mean, Peyton Manning was bad his first year and got better his second year, and it, it's just too early to judge Tua, but I the question is not up to me. It's will Miami trade him or not? I don't know. So I think Deshaun Watson better be on the table. Tua is on the table if anybody wants him. Sam Darnold might be available. Uh, the Jets are the number two overall pick. We all assume they're going to draft a quarterback, uh, Justin Fields or probably Zach Wilson. Uh, I feel bad for Sam, though. I think Sam never really got the support he deserved or needed in New York. Had a bad head coach. Um, it's so embarrassing to look back at. When 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 Adam Gase went to New York, I went, oh, it's going to work. I, I was an idiot who believed in Adam Gase because I went, well, Miami didn't work. Was it the quarterback or the coach? And I said it was Ryan Tannehill's fault. Pretty clearly, it was the coach's fault, not Ryan Tannehill. So Sam Darnold had no weapons, uh, a horrible coach. Never really got any support, and now they're going to probably bail on him. So we believe uh, Sam Darnold might be available because the Jets are probably going to draft their own quarterback, new coach, uh, new regime, an unimpressive quarterback previously. Will the Jaguars trade Gardner Minshew? I don't think they will because he's cheap. And uh, in case so you're going to draft Trevor Lawrence number one overall, if he's not ready to be your starting quarterback week one, put Gardner out there. Gardner can take some hits and do his thing. Uh, you got to put somebody out there. And uh, unless the Jaguars get a really good offer, because Gardner's cheap and people like him, why not keep him? I, I don't. There's no reason for the Jaguars to want to trade Gardner Minshew unless you make a move that they can't refuse. So uh, I would find it unlikely Gardner Minshew is traded from Jacksonville. Uh, and then I guess there's Russell Wilson. People keep saying that Russell Wilson is available. I don't. Uh, it seems like a bunch of nonsense to me. Um, like, like the Chicago bears, like everyone's like, the, the bears are going to trade for Russell Wilson with what, what can Chicago give Seattle that helps Seattle replace Russell Wilson? Nothing. I, they don't, they don't have any, the, I just, I don't understand the, the, the bears have the 20th overall pick. <laughs> like <laughs> how valuable is that? Can you get a starting quarterback with the 20th overall pick? Oh, oh, you, you can't. Maybe you can trade two firsts. I, I, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I don't get it. I guess maybe Seattle could trade Russell Wilson to Chicago, get the 20th overall pick, then trade. Oh, oh wait, but they don't. Oh, Seattle doesn't have a first round pick this year because they traded it for Jamal Adams. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I don't, I don't see how Seattle gets a quarterback if they trade with Chicago. So we have the Jaguars, the Jets. They're number one and two. Uh, these are teams. So I think there are about nine teams that I count that need a quarterback. Jaguars, Jets, the one and two overall pick. Uh, no matter what happens in the next month and a half, the Jaguars and the Jets are going to walk away with new quarterbacks going into next year. That, it just, it, that's a fact. Miami and Houston, they both might trade their quarterbacks to uh, Deshaun Watson. Uh, the Denver Broncos have the number nine overall pick. They are very unhappy with their young quarterback, Drew Locke. There was a really shameful report that came out saying that Denver had to dumb down their offense to help Drew out last year. So Drew Locke is holding back Denver. I I keep wanting it to be a thing. At last year, I, I was holding out hope last year, like, oh, maybe it'll get better. And I was being patient and trying to be fair. And I give him one more year, but I, I don't I don't think that's going to happen in, in Denver. And I don't blame them at all. And so they're a good team. They need to get the quarterback right. Because if Denver has a good quarterback, their roster is incredible. They can win, but not with Drew Locke, most likely. So... Denver is probably going to try to trade up, draft a quarterback. Um, you have the Lions have the number seven overall pick. They traded for Jared Goff, but they also went to Trey Lance's pro day. So because Jared Goff is mediocre, because they're looking at rookie at, at quarterbacks coming into the NFL draft, maybe Detroit is going to draft a quarterback at seven overall. Number eight overall, the Carolina Panthers have the number eight pick. Uh, they have a solid quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater. He is solid. He's not your long-term plan. It's possible a quarterback falls to them at number eight. If I was Detroit and I knew who was in front of me and there's a couple teams that don't need quarterbacks who could trade down. If I am Detroit, if I am the Carolina Panthers, I'm number eight overall in the draft. I'm not risking it. I'm trading up to get a quarterback. I am not going to roll the dice and hope a guy lands to me. Because not only do you have to get one of those top five quarterbacks to come all the way down to eight, but you also would probably have a guy you'll want most. 
Like, what if you really love Zach Wilson, but you're like, ah, Trey Lance and Mac Jones don't interest me. You got to go get Zach Wilson. You're close enough, but you got to finish the job and go get that guy. So um, not only does Carolina need a quarterback, I think they should make a move from eight to like four or something to go get the guy they actually want. Uh, Don't be stagnant. Don't wait, because people who wait often have things taken from them. Maybe Philadelphia, number six overall, wants a quarterback. This is very unlikely. Uh, The owner came out and said, you know, Jalen Hurts is our quarterback. But a little paranoid uh, light bulb in my head went off and said, hmm, they probably are committed to uh, Jalen Hurts. But what if Jalen Hurts isn't the guy that Philadelphia wants? What if the reason why they put that out there? Because that was leaked for some reason. Maybe it was a signal saying, hey, uh, we're willing to trade down. But it could have also been a smokescreen telling other teams, oh, you, you're safe. You're good. Oh, no. You don't need to move up in the draft. We're, we're not going to draft. We're going to draft Kyle Pitts a tight end. Don't worry. You don't need to. We're not going to draft a quarterback. Make the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos feel safe. Woo them into a false sense of security. And then, bam, go get a quarterback. <laughs> like, oh, you thought we were, you thought we met that? No, no. We, we, we just drafted Trey Lance. We like him. That's very possible that it's just a lie. So very unlikely that maybe Philadelphia drafts a quarterback at number six overall. Uh, The Patriots, the Bears, and the 49ers, they all need quarterbacks. Uh, Either they need to move up in the draft or they got to trade for Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson. The 49ers have the number 12 overall pick. Uh, They also have Jimmy Garoppolo. But Jimmy Garoppolo, if you watch film recently, has been very, very disappointing. So I would not put a lot of stock into believing in in Jimmy Garoppolo. The 49ers, in my opinion, if they want to win a Super Bowl, which I think they have the the talent on their roster to make that happen, they're going to need a better quarterback who can elevate them. Like, I would give, I would pay so much money to watch Zach Wilson play quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. It's not going to happen. But, man, I, I would, I, w- I wish that was a possibility. If it was Madden, I'm like, I'm trading all my best players to make that happen. It's not Madden. You can't do that. But uh, the Patriots gave Cam Newton a one-year deal. Bunch of incentives, um, and it's kind of weird because maybe they did it to me- have Cam Newton mentor a rookie quarterback. I I don't really get what the Patriots are doing because it, Cam's not their guy long term. They would have given him a longer contract if he was. Uh, the Patriots need a long term quarterback. I know. I, I I to this day don't know what the Patriots are doing. That number fifteenth overall pick. Um, I don't know that that's that valuable to trade up. So we'll see what the Patriots do. They're in the quarterback market. I just don't know what quarterback they're going to get, if any, because they seem like they're not in a position really to make a good move for a quarterback. Maybe Jimmy Garoppolo. That, that's the the only person I could see making a trade for Jimmy Garoppolo is Bill Belichick and the Patriots, based on their history working with him before. And um, I, maybe that happens, question mark? But that's also one of the only quarterbacks I can see the Patriots actually getting to, because... The 15th overall pick, you got to bundle it with a lot to trade up in the draft with like maybe the Falcons or something. And I don't know what they're going to trade for Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson. I don't see that happening either. So uh, I don't know who the Patriots are going to get. And the team that's most unlikely to get a quarterback is the Chicago Bears. The Bears have no quarterback. Uh, There's not a lot of stuff they can trade for one either, though. I just don't get it. Uh, Seattle and Houston would not benefit from a trade with Chicago because Chicago has... Uh, the 20th overall pick. So the, it's a draft pick that you can't use to get a quarterback. Uh, it's also, I mean, uh, the Bears, they just can't help you. If you're going to trade away Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson, you're going to make a trade that's going to allow you to eventually get another quarterback. The Bears have nothing of value that can help you replace a quarterback before next year. So I don't I don't get it. Later first round pick, not much to offer in a trade. The Bears, I, I, I have no idea how the Bears are going to get a quarterback. I, I just don't see it. I, I I know they're banking on trading for Russell Wilson. I don't think that's realistic. So I'm very deeply concerned about the Chicago Bears ending up with a quarterback and probably ending up without a quarterback for next year and playing like Nick Foles. Oh, and the last one. Um, <laughs> that's going to make people very mad. I don't care. The Pittsburgh Steelers need a quarterback. Badly. Uh, I, they're in denial. The The entire city of Pittsburgh is in denial. They're so excited about the Big Ben goodbye tour. He's saying goodbye for a reason. He got a one-year deal for a reason. Uh, Pittsburgh needs a new quarterback. They need a long-term plan. 
for whenever Big Ben decides to uh, next year, for when Big Ben leaves after next year, it's a goodbye tour. The Steelers should trade for uh, Gardner Minshew or Sam Darnold, but they won't because, again, they'd appear to have no interest in making moves that can help their franchise moving forward after Big Ben. They're like, oh, it's we'll figure that out someday. It's like, oh, your house is on fire. Uh, I don't think that's something you can put off. You, you got to put out the fire. But Pittsburgh has no interest in replacing Big Ben, Big ben anytime soon. Uh, it's weird. I don't get it. Uh, and I, if you have a problem, you solve it. If your house is on fire, you put out the fire. If your car is breaking down, you fix what needs to be fixed. You can keep driving. We can all see. It's kind of like this. Here's, here's exactly what it is. The Steelers are driving towards a cliff. They know they need to stop their car or they're going to go over the cliff. And instead of stopping the car, they went, ah, let's just put a flip-flop down or put, put on cruise control. It's like they put it on cruise control. They're like, that's fine. Stay the same speed. Nothing's going to change. We know we're going to go off the cliff, but it's fine. It's fine. It's like the meme of the guy sitting in a house on fire, like going, it's fine. I don't mind that my house is burning down. It's fine. That's the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're in denial. I don't get it. They need a, lo- a new quarterback for a long-term plan. Sam Darnold, Gardner Minshew are great ideas. Uh, I'm not a believer in uh, Dwayne Haskins working out. The guy that's immature as a quarterback in 2021, you have an immature quarterback. That, that doesn't work. I, I've seen that. Ha- I've seen that fail too many times. Uh, I've talked to Ryan Leaf. Immature quarterbacks don't work in the NFL. And so I Pittsburgh has immature Dwayne Haskins, aging Big Ben, and they think everything's fine. And it's not fine. They need a long-term plan. So either way, next month, uh, the next month and a half is going to be incredible. So many teams need quarterbacks. Uh, They better figure something out. There's a lot of quarterbacks available. Trades, quarterbacks in the draft. It's going to be amazing. Uh, And and really, I think what I'm most curious about, when the dust settles in a month and a half, end of April, draft is over, trades have been made, which team still will not have a quarterback? My money's on Chicago, but I'm curious which team is not going to have a starting quarterback for 2021 at the end of April. We will find out. It's going to be very fun. And uh, gosh, I am so excited for the NFL draft. It's going to be amazing. Uh, before I take a break, real quick, I just want to say I feel so good about the New York Jets. I cannot believe how good I feel about uh, the, 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 let's call them Gang Green. Is that what they are? Uh, I feel so good about the New York Jets. It's unbelievable. It's kind of crazy how quickly things can change where I remember when the Jamal Adams trade happened last year and I was like, this is a nightmare. This is this is the worst team in football. And they had a horrible year. Adam Gase was a train wreck. And I, I just remember like feeling, I, I think I literally did a topic at one point saying the Jets are the worst team in football. Now I look at and I go, I love their GM, Joe Douglas. Joe Douglas is smart. Uh, he's made good moves. Joe Douglas got a great GM. You got a awesome head coach. I think of the head coaches that were hired uh, this offseason. Robert Sala is my favorite. He's a great leader. Players love him. They fight hard for him. Go watch the San Francisco 49ers defense at the end of last year. Their season is lost. The players are, have nothing really to fight for, and they're still fighting incredibly hard. Every single play, they fight hard for their coach. And I know they're, they're financially incentivized, but he's a good leader. And unlike Adam Gase, Robert Sala is a grown-up. Go listen to the way the dude talks. Go read some of his interviews. He, he, the words he chooses, the way he uh, conducts himself is very mature. It's, like, it's, it's what you need from a coach. <laughs> unlike the crazy eyes guy looked all something up uh, on his introductory press conference a couple years ago with Adam Gase. I, I really like Robert Sala. He presents very well. He knows his stuff as well. He's uh, very good schematically. He's got great game planning. Robert Sala, I feel great about as a head coach. And then the trump card here, the Jets have the number two overall pick. So you have coach, GM, oh, and this, this draft pick is super valuable as an asset. The Jets can get almost anything they want. The Pretty much the only thing the Jets can't get in the next month and a half is Trevor Lawrence because he's going to go to Jacksonville. Either you can draft a quarterback number two overall. You draft uh, Zach Wilson or Justin Fields or Trey Lance. You pick the, you have the pick of the litter other than Trevor Lawrence. Or if you're the New York Jets, you could say, hey, we got two first-round picks this year. We got the one from Seattle in the Jamal Adams trade. We also got our own number two overall pick. And what we're going to do, hey, Houston, we will give you a couple first-round picks 
for Deshaun Watson. And, and then you can use that number two overall pick to draft whatever quarterback you want. We'll take Deshaun Watson. Uh, the, the, or maybe they could try to make a trade for Russell Wilson and they make the same pitch. Say, hey, you can use the number two overall, over, number two overall pick to get yourself a quarterback. We'll take Russell Wilson off your hands. The Jets have so many options. They've got a great head coach. they got a good GM. Uh, the sky is blue in New York. I, I, I am so excited for the Jets. Uh, pretty crazy how a couple months ago they were a joke. And today I look at New York and I go, I'd want to be there. I, I'd want to play for Robert Sala. Uh, they're going to have a quarterback. That's awesome. I've got a ton of hope that things are going to work. And I haven't felt that way about the New York Jets in a long time. So you Jets fans out there, I don't know if it's going to last. Hope is very fickle. Sometimes hope disappears instantly. Maybe you make a terrible move in the draft. You draft like a tight end, number two overall. <laughs> you squander your opportunity. I don't know. But I, I'm telling you, this moment in time, the Jets have every reason. Jets fans have every reason to feel hopeful. That's very, very cool. It's a, a rare feeling when you look at your team and you go, you know what? Things are looking up. And I know New York fans are very negative, so they're probably like, screw you and your hope. It's going to it's gonna fail. But I, I'm telling you, the New York Jets have things working out pretty well right now. Coach, GM, number two overall pick, I don't know how you fail. I don't, I don't know how you don't make this turn into something very, very good for the New York Jets moving forward. Uh, I guess it can't happen, though. <laughs> I hate to be that guy, but you, you can squander. Who is that tight end they drafted? Kyle Brady. When they needed a quarterback or something. There was some draft a long time ago where the Jets just totally botched it. And you're like, oh my, that's horrifying. Anyway, uh, I'm actually going to call an audible and end the show here. Um, I got a lot of stuff coming. I was going to talk about the AFC West, do predictions versus reality. I'm actually going to cu cut it short, uh, do it in the next episode. There's a lot of news on the horizon. I know that there's a ton of stuff about to happen in the NFL. And so what I'm going to do is instead of uh, keep the show going, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to put out what I have. Uh, and then we will talk tomorrow about, uh, there's just a free agency. I know there's a bunch of stuff about to pop off. And so we'll do that. I'll do predictions versus reality. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you. I appreciate you. I, I'm so grateful. I love my job. I love my life. Uh, I love my future wife. Oh, that rhymes. Yes. Anyway, uh, I love you guys. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Ba-dum-bum. Bam. We are done.